Miss Dorothy Johnson is going to lead us in an invocation. standing as Ms. Pam Trammell, Register General of the Children of the Confederacy, leads us in the uh, pledge to the uh, flag. Join me, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is Nancy Cook, third vice president of the Columbia Memorial, will lead us in a salute to the Arkansas flag. Vice President of Columbia Memorial will lead us in the salute to the Confederate flag.
the MOSMP members and our CFC members, our children of the Confederacy members, our distinguished guests, which are all over here, and our visitors. We hope you, we hope you have an enjoyable time because we have had a wonderful time working on this and getting it together. The chapter is very proud to be a part of the dedication as part of the Cecil Centennial events that are scheduled throughout the state for the next five years. Next is Dr. Jamie Brandon, who is the Vice President of the Arkansas Cecil Centennial Commission. Uh, not only am I here as the Vice Chairman of the Arkansas Civil War Sesquicentennial Commission, but I'm also a Magnolian. I teach archaeology over at SAU, so it's a special treat. And I feel some sort of connection to uh, uh, General Cowan because um, he's a fellow teacher. He taught uh, school in Knoxville uh, after the war. And he's a fellow Tennessean who found Magnolia as his home, so I certainly feel uh, a connection in that regard. One of the official duties of the Arkansas Civil War Sesquicentennial Commission is to uh, promote local observances that tell the local story. Uh, and this marker is a great example of just that. It proves that you do not have to have a military action or military movements in your area in order to have an important story to tell about the Civil War. The Civil War touched the lives of every community in Arkansas and throughout the nation uh, uh, and uh, impacted everybody in this marker is a great example of uh, that impaction. It, it, it tells the story of what happened to folks after the war uh, and how geography changed and migration changed, and so it tells a very important story. And I would like to thank uh, uh, the Columbia Memorial Chapter of the UDC, uh, the Beulah Longinot Good Chapter of the Children of the Confederacy, uh, the Thomas Dalkery Camp of the CSV, the Woodsmen of the World, uh, So We Are, and all the other individuals and organizations that made this marker possible. You all should be very proud of uh, what you've done uh, and as a part of the sesquicentennial. Thank you. <laughs> okay, next is uh, our mayor. Parnell Van. On behalf of the citizens of Magnolia and all of our city employees, I do want to welcome you here today. And this is a special day. I would like to thank the Columbia Memorial Chapter 1374 and the United Daughters of the Confederacy for having me here today. And a, a special thank you to Mike McNeil and the Magnolia Reporter. If you didn't read his article yesterday, it's very newsworthy. I enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. Y'all have a great day. Thank you. Next will be our county judge, Mr. Larry Atkinson. Thank you, Betty Faye. Uh, I just want to welcome everybody to Columbia County. If you've not been to Columbia County, come back again. And you're always welcome here. Uh, it's a little warm today, as we all can see. Uh, appreciate his descendants, uh, General Cowan's descendants being here. And I know you probably have some stories and things you want to tell us that are very important. And appreciate uh, the uh, opportunity to be here for this important dedication. And uh, y'all, y'all come back to see us sometime. Thank you. I have to apologize to our president of the Arkansas Division of the United Daughters of the Confederacy. Mary, you were supposed to be up here first. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this is our president. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out on this beautiful day. And I don't mind following these fine gentlemen, not one bit. I want to welcome all of you, the UDC ladies, the SCV, commanders, the MOSB, and guests. I would like to introduce some special people out in the audience. We have Arkansas Division officers here today. Our first vice president is Jenny Stone. Jenny, would you stand and wave? 
And let's see here. Over here under the tent is Ms. Martha Coon, our second vice president. And on this other tent is Ms. Nancy Cook, our third vice president. Thank you so much. I bring you greetings on behalf of the Arkansas United Daughters of the Confederacy. It is with great excitement that I'm here this morning, standing on this sacred ground in Magnolia Cemetery to pay tribute to the highest ranking Confederate officer buried in Arkansas, Major General John McCallum. What a wonderful way to commemorate the 150th anniversary of the war between the states. And what a wonderful way to teach the true history of our Southland. The erection of this marker, this historical marker, as part of the sesquicentennial commission activities provides a historical record of permanency for centuries to come. And future generations can be aware of the significant role that General McCowan played in Arkansas history during the war between the states. It has been noted that during the Civil War, patriotism most often revolved around the state, not the nation. When these men fought, their home state was more important than anything else to them. And I want to thank all of you that were involved in the acquisition of this marker. I am truly honored to be here today and be a part of this marker dedication. Thank you. Next we'll have Mr. Jerry Lawrence, who is the commander of the Arkansas Society of the Military Order of Stars and Bars. Society of the Military Order of Stars and Bars. I thank you ladies of the Columbia Memorial Chapter of the UDC for bestowing on me the honor to take part in this event. The MOSB takes great pride in their relationships with the UDC. <coughs> and we commend you all for all you do toward honoring and preserving the history of our Confederate ancestors. One thing the MOSB likes to do is occasionally deserve, uh, present awards to deserving people, both inside our organization and once in a while to non-members. Today I am honored to present the Joseph Ibn Davis Award to someone that I hope is a future member of our organization. This man has caught, this young man has caught a, the attention of a lot of people with his outstanding personality and general <coughs> southerly manners and his zeal in pursuing the goals of the children of the Confederacy. Ms. Pam Trammell, will you uh, escort Mr. Seth Cook to the podium? <laughs> Cemetery to 
to his burial site overlooking the James River to attend. <clears throat> Through the presentation of the Joseph Ibn Davis Award, a maximum of one time per year to a deserving member of the Children of the Confederacy at the discretion of the Commander-in-Chief of the General Society of the Military Order Stars and Bars, the General Society wishes to remember Joseph Evan Davis and what might have been for him, and to recognize the recipient and the children of the Confederacy and what can be for them. The General Society of Military Orders of Stars and Bars now desires to recognize and encourage what can be by the presentation of the Joseph Evan Davis Award. Uh, <clears throat> Mrs. Tramble helped me write the resume, Seth, for, uh, <laughs> Uh, requesting this award, so I asked her if she would present the pen for us. The medal. To all who s shall see these presents, greetings, know ye that Seth Cook is recognized for the exceptional dedication to our Southern heritage and hereby recommend by the military order stars and bars and testimony whereof this certificate is given under my hand and seal this seventh day of June 2012. <coughs> Max Waldrop Jr., Commander in General. <coughs> Seth, I Congratulate you and uh, congratulate you for Commander Walter. <clears throat> We're very proud of Ladies and gentlemen, I beg your forgiveness. I overlooked one of our division officers as I was introducing them. Miss Dorothy Johnson is our division chaplain, and please <laughs> forgive me, Dorothy. <laughs> and the last two weeks have been with the United Daughters of the Confederacy. So once again, it is a true pleasure to be here. On behalf of our division commander, uh, Ray Jones, who is also at an event this weekend, I bring you greetings from the Arkansas Division. I, like Dr. Brandon, have multiple connections to this ceremony. And one of those is that I am also the national chairman of the Graves and Monuments Committee. We are in the process now, since I, uh, Dr. Brandon, and the Civil War Sesquicentennial Commission has appropriated a fund for markers, I am trying to get the word markers added to my job description so that it will read that I am the chairman of the Graves and Monuments and Markers. <laughs> Arkansas at present has already started a movement among other states to do the same uh, memorials. I'm, so, Dr. Brandon, thank you very much for the initiative that the state of Arkansas has taken. I appreciate it. As chairman of the Grays and Monuments Committee, I'm always reminded of what Jefferson Davis said in his post years after the war. He said that nothing fills me with deeper sadness than see a southern man apologizing for the defense we made of our inheritance. 
Our cause was so just, so sacred, that had I known all that has come to pass, had I known what was to be inflicted upon me, all that my country was to suffer, suffer, all that our posterity was to endure, I would do it all over again. And just as he said, nothing fills him with that deeper sadness, nothing fills me with more delight to see a community and a, an organization such as the United Daughters of the Confederacy to go out and reach out to your community so that a great memorial like this can be erected in such a sacred place and on such historic ground. So, Mayor, Judge, thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for all that you've done to support the community. So on behalf of the Graves and Monuments Committee and Robert Edwards, I bring you greetings and, and you have my sincerest thanks. Thank you. Next we'll have Mr. Fiddle Maynard. He is the uh, with the Red Diamond Sons of the Confederate <laughs> Veterans from Texas. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Texas County, Texas. <laughs> Got to get that in. Oh, On behalf of the Red Diamond Camp, Sons of Confederate Veterans, Division of Texas, we bring greetings and we bring thanks. And thank you for asking us to come up. Thank you. It's good to see a lot of old friends. Uh, and you can take that either way you want to, Mr. <laughs> Edwards. <laughs> But it's good to be here on this historic occasion. We're glad that we can come. And it's, uh, it's a little uncomfortable. But one of the things that I try to remember when we're in this is that, yeah, it's hot and it's not comfortable. But we're going to be finished here in a little bit. And we're all going to get in air-conditioned cars. And we're going to ride home. The men buried here where I see all of these markers, they didn't have all of that. So if we can endure just a few minutes of it, pay tribute to what they endured for a lifetime, I think we'll be okay. Thank you all for allowing us to come. Thank you, Miss Mary. Thank you. Thank you for helping us with this. And I'm sad to say, you see Bill Elmore's name is on the list for the next uh, speaker from the Thomas P. Dockery Sons of the Confederate Veterans. But uh, Bill had emergency surgery a uh, day before yesterday, I think, wasn't it, Mary? Uh, appendectomy. And they informed me that they must have nicked the appendix. And so they wanted to make sure that he's out of the woods with any infection. So we wish him all the best. And we'll now go to Mr. Mike Lee, or, <laughs> no, <laughs> wrong Mike, but <laughs> come on. Well, I was just going to say everything I said, but I just wanted to say Bill representing all those. is the commander of the Elbert Steele, Sons of the Confederate Veterans in Louisville. Thank you, Mr. Clay. I want to thank everybody for coming today. It's a privilege to be here. I know Earl took a long time to get here, but we're all glad you're here today. And uh, all you ladies, thank y'all for coming. And I want to thank the Sons of the Color Guard for here today. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> thank you. And hey, excuse me, Bill's cannon, too. <laughs> Next, we'll have Mr. Seth Cook. This is the third vice president general of the Children of the Confederacy. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for inviting me out here today. Um, I've been coming up here for dedicating uh, the marker, I mean, not the marker, but 
dedicating the memorial to General McCowan for a few years now, and it's always been a great ceremony, and this one is no different, and it covers a lot more, and it really touches home to me because, you know, whenever you've grown up supporting these men and to see that 150 years has gone by since they sacrificed so much for us, it just gives you a little tug and pushes you forward a little more to support them as much as we possibly can. And um, on the general CFC convention note, um, well, we've had a wonderful year, and we couldn't have done it without the support of the people that are sitting here today. And we would like to thank you for everything that you've done for us in continuing our supporting of these troops. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, next we will have Mr. Zane McWilliams. He's the president of the Beulah Longinot Goo chapter of the Children of the Confederacy. That's our local chapter, and I think some of them can't learn how to pronounce these <laughs> words, but they, they'll do okay. I am Zane McWilliams, president of the Bureau of Laws and I Ch chapter of the CFC. I welcome each of you. It is an honor to be a part of this 150th anniversary of the Civil War event. The memory of General McCowan. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, the gentleman that I'm fixing to introduce now has many more titles than the one in your program. The one I will use, and the one I will use, but this man has made many trips to Magnolia to honor his great-grandfather and his great-great-uncle. He will give us a little biographical information about General McCowan and Colonel McCowan. He is no stranger to many of us here. The gentleman I speak of is Mr. Earl McCowan. He's the adjutant of the Brig Brigadier General Charles Clark Military Order, the Sars and Bars in Cleveland, Mississippi. Good morning. Mm -hmm. First, I want to thank uh, all that uh, had anything to do with acquiring this uh, this marker. This is a this is a, a really great uh, honor, and uh, on behalf of uh, General John Porter. My great grandpappy, we do say thank you. I, I left all my notes in Mississippi, so you all bear with me. <laughs> I, I have a senior moment most of the time. But anyway, uh, John Porter and George Washington were both born in uh, uh, Sevierville, uh, Tennessee. That's on the banks of the Little Pigeon River, uh, where just across the highway, from where Dollywood stands now. So, and this is not the first uh, historical marker for uh, John Porter, uh, right where Pigeon Forge and Sevierville join, right on the highway, there is a marker uh, claiming John Porter is the first man from the area to go to West Point and graduate. Uh, it also uh, applauds his uh, advancement to Major General of the Confederate Army. John uh, knew what he wanted to do uh, all along. John was very studious. Uh, there was no foolishness about him. Uh, I have letters from uh, the people that recommended him to the academy. And uh, uh, John knew where he wanted to go to begin with. Uh, he. Uh, went to uh, the academy, uh, failed the first year. He could not learn to speak French. And so he spent five years at, at West Point rather than the, the usual four. Uh, on his graduation, he was commissioned second lieutenant, fourth U.S. Uh, artillery. And he served with the, uh, the artillery, uh, fought the Seminoles in uh, Florida, they fought the Sioux and the Apache in uh, uh, the West. Uh, he also fought the, uh, uh, the Mexicans. And while he was, uh, had gone to, uh, uh, to Mexico to uh, serve, uh, serve his country there, uh, his brother uh, George 
was uh, appointed captain of a company of Tennessee volunteers. And this was at age 19. So at age 19, uh, both George and John were, were uh, in Mexico. Uh, John had just been uh, promoted to brevet captain. So we had both brothers uh, serving as captain at the time. Uh, I have a copy of a letter that, uh, that uh, George wrote, and George reminds me of me. Uh, he wrote to his sister and he said, well, it took uh, George all or John all these years and five years education and all I had to do was raise my hand and be sworn in. So. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I also have a copy of a letter that, uh, and again, this reminds me of me. Uh, George's sister wrote him and telling him how proud she was of the fact that he had uh, uh, joined the Army and was going to serve his country. And she was so proud of his, uh, his patriotism. Uh, and George wrote back and he said, patriotism didn't have a thing to do with it. He says, I wanted mom and daddy to know that I was old enough and man enough to fight in a war. And surely I was old enough and man enough to court the ladies in Sevierville. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, that's kind of like me. I, uh, I, I got tired of farming when I was 16. Uh, I left home and enlisted in the Navy, so uh, I know how, what George was thinking anyway. Well, both George and John served their country uh, faithfully and honorably. And uh, at the uh, uh, end of the war, uh, John taught school in Knoxville until the Reconstructionists decided they didn't want to a Confederate general teaching our kids, so they fired him. Uh, he also served as a uh, as an engineer, uh, surveying for railroads and highways in uh, the Knox district of Tennessee. Again, the Reconstructionists decided that he just may be mapping new routes for, for highways and railroads for the Second Rebellion. They fired him. <laughs> so he, he decided to come to Magnolia. Uh, he joined his brother here, uh, and he bought a little farm out on, I think it was Calhoun Road, the best that uh, I can figure. Uh, John didn't marry. Uh, John was, uh, according to his memoirs, he, he was too set on John to, to share himself with anybody else. <laughs> and uh, he's, uh, to me, he was a very great man. Uh, he loved poetry, he loved flowers and gardening, and uh, he loved his country. George, after the war, came back to Magnolia. He served as a circuit judge. He also served on the uh, Arkansas uh, Constitutional Committee. Understand that he also served as a state senator and uh, full of hellfire and brimstone. Uh, he uh, he loved to talk, uh, and a lot of times his talk got him in trouble. But uh, nevertheless, he was a good uh, a good man, a good soldier, and a good statesman. And uh, it's, it's really great that uh, this marker is placed uh, in honor of the, of the two brothers. I, uh, I have uh, found a, a thing in, uh, in my chaplain's handbook that talks about why we should uh, uh, remember and honor memorials, and I would like I know it's not part of the biography, but I would like to, uh, to read this to you. This is from uh, uh, Bishop Richard Wilmer's uh, comments uh, in 1887. One chief reason for giving these reminiscences to the public is that I may help to keep sacred in the memory of the rising generation the traditions of their fathers. 
a new generation ordinarily little cares for and little acquaints itself with the past. The results, in part from this fact, is that ordinarily parents concern themselves too little with the opinions of their children on matters past, present, or, or those to come. I do not share this indifference. I have a special fear that our young people, as they recede farther and farther from our times, will gather their views of the recent past from partisan histories rather than from the sacredly preserved traditions. The school books and histories of our times are naturally, as a general rule, from northern states, and their authors look at all these matters with the eyes of others than our own. I cannot endure to think that any descendant of mine shall open, say, a catechism and find Benedict Arnold, Jefferson Davis, and Robert E. Lee chosen out to exemplify treason and rebellion. I want our young people to know what I know, that the two men named in the list of traitors were loyal and exemplified through life every trait of honor and loyalty. Nor can I endure to think that my grandsons shall be sent down to read history, which tell them that their ancestors were tyrants to their servants, rebels against their government, and traitors to their country. So far as in me lies, this shall never be. The shame to every man who loves not to pluck the nettles from the graves of his sires and strew them from fl with flowers. This, uh, this marker honoring John and, and George uh, is great. I would like to suggest that we look at the, the names on this marker that we also remember each and every of our compatriots that are buried here in this hallowed ground. Thank you very much. God bless the South. Thank you, Mr. McCallum. At this time, we will now have the regular uh, dedication of the marker. Miss Mary Lewis and uh, Dorothy Johnson and Mary Jackson will take care of this. To us a glorious heritage, keep ever in our minds and hearts a, a, a spirit of fervent gratitude. May we rededicate our lives to a fulfillment of service for thee. And may the blessings of God rest and abide here forever. Amen. Not for fame or fortune, not for place or rank, not lured by ambition or goaded by necessity, but in simple obedience to duty as they understood it. These men suffered all, sacrificed all, dared all, and died. We now dedicate this sesquicentennial centennial marker, which denotes the notable service during the war between the states by Major General John Porter <coughs> McCowan and his brother, Colonel John McCowan. May this marker be blessed. May it remind all who pass, not only of the notable deeds of these Confederate heroes, but of the continuing need for unselfish service. From this moment of dedication, we trust there may come some inspiration for broader vision and finer service. The marker states, John P. McCowan was born August the 19th, 1815, in Sevierville, Tennessee. An 1840 graduate of West Point, he served in the Mexican and Seminole Wars before resigning from the U.S. Army on May 17, 1861. McCowan joined the Confederate Army, rising to the rank of Major General. He served in Missouri and Tennessee, leading a division that included an Arkansas Brigade, 
at Stallings River. After the war, he moved to Magnolia, and after his death on January the 22nd, 1874, was buried in the city cemetery. His brother, G.W. McCowan, a Confederate veteran, also lies there.